Hi everyone and welcome to the second episode of Film Feedback. Today I'm going to be looking at a friend of mine, Jacob Peel's short film from Vibrant Films Productions. He's done a short film called House Fire. It's about two and a half minutes long. So let's kick it right off. Go to the first shot. This is the first shot of the film. I actually really like this shot. I think that the, the seeing the silhouette of the character is really cool, having the alarm going off. One of the things I really liked about this shot was that, I think it's here, how the character sort of opens up the curtains and almost sort of starts the film by lighting up the, uh, the whole shot. And that kind of signifies, you know, the beginning of someone's day with the alarm going off and opening the curtains. It's almost like the film kicks into gear once you open the curtains, which is really, really cool. Um, I'm not sure if you meant to do that or not, but I think it's got quite a poetic sort of feeling to it and it's very, very cool. But yeah, going back to my um, problem with the shot length, this shot is 42 seconds. And the thing is like a lot of films do one takes where they don't cut for ages and the camera's moving constantly. A good example of that is in Indiana Jones when he's having a chat with someone and the whole time he's packing the camera's following him around and they're having the conversation there's no cut in that for a few minutes which is really really cool this isn't the case though this is just a really long shot that's quite unnecessary essentially all that happens in this shot is that the character gets out of bed you probably could have shown that in 10 seconds and cut it down so then essentially what happens is the character gets out of bed he goes downstairs as you can see and then he goes to make some pancakes or something i don't know uh, but he puts some oil in the pan and it goes in his hand or something by the looks of it and then when he goes to turn on the uh, the hob, he actually, there's like a massive fireball. And then in the next shot, his hand's on fire and it's all sort of kicking off. My critique with this scene is that I'm a little bit confused about what happens. Essentially, there's a bit of a fireball and then uh, in the next shot, the character's on the floor and he's unconscious and his hand's on fire. I'm guessing what you meant to do with this is that the fireball kind of like knocks him out and he's unconscious and that starts the house fire and it's all spreading. It's not very clear because there's like a little fireball and then suddenly he's just on the floor out cold. If you want to convey the fact that the fireball was so powerful that he's like knocked out and unconscious, I don't know, maybe because of the gas leak or something, the best way to do it would be at this part like fade to white so that it kind of gives the impression that the fireball is a lot bigger than it is. I'm assuming you guys did this practically, because if not, this is one of the best visual effects I've ever seen. That's actually really, really cool. And there's a lot to be said for doing stuff practically. Obviously, health and safety is important, but you can never really match practical fire with visual effects. It's really, really difficult. It's one of the hardest things to simulate. And yeah, I just think that looks really cool. So on to the next shot. After this guy's on, on the floor and his hand's on fire, it cuts to a shot of someone else in bed. And there's like a little bit of a sort of flickering light on them that's orange. This shot's a little bit dark. You can't really see what's going on. I can make out that there's someone in bed and there's obviously something wrong so they're panicking and blah 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 but essentially like this shot is too dark there's no there's no two ways about it you either want to introduce some lights if you're in a room maybe turn the lights on if they already were and it's just really dark the best thing you can probably do is just bump up the iso in the camera this was one of my critiques of the film uh, last episode as well you never want to have a dark shot because the audience can't see what's going on so either bump it up in post or just increase the iso in the camera whatever you want to do but make sure that your shots aren't dark and underexposed <laughs> So the next shot is this guy getting out of bed and he, I think he goes to reach for the door or something and he like burns his hand, as you can see here. <laughs> it's, so there's like a little bit of a fire noise, so I'm guessing he got burnt or something there. I really, really like the thing that you did with the lights here. So there's obviously some sort of orange light here. I'm not sure how you actually lit this, but it's really cool. So there's like a very faint flicker and you can see the light sort of changing levels a bit. And uh, with the sound effect of the fire, it, it gives a really nice impression that there is actually a fire in the room. So then essentially the character gets out of bed and he goes over to the window and opens the window and leans out. I'm not entirely sure what happens here. I think he climbs out the window, but it doesn't show that. So that's kind of left up to your imagination, but you'll see what happens after that in a minute anyway. So this next bit is my favorite part of the film by far. Really, really well done. And I'm assuming you guys didn't shoot this. I think this is stock footage of a house fire or something. But either way, it's really, really well done. And this is a really good example of how stock footage can increase production value loads. Obviously, you guys probably didn't have access to a house that you could set on fire for the film. So you probably went online and found some stock footage and put this in. In the shots before, there was lighting and we could hear like sound effects of the fire crackling, but there was no real sense that there was a massive fire going on. So by using this stock footage of a house fire, it really, really conveys the fact there is a big fire going on and it's a real problem and the whole, the whole house is burning down as opposed to just a little fire in a room. Stock footage is great for this sort of thing because if it's something that you haven't got access to to film, you can just find footage of it online and put it in. It really, really increases the production value and in this case, it made a massive difference. And then the character gets up, he does a bit of crawling and then runs away and he's sort of shouting for help and stuff. And then we have this shot. This shot's really cool. Good use of visual effects. It kind of reminds me of the early days when I used to do visual effects and I'd set my house on fire and things. It actually works really well. I'm assuming these are specific sort of window assets of a house on fire and they work really, really well. The black 
smoke looks very convincing. It's maybe a little bit transparent up here, so maybe duplicate it to sort of make it a bit thicker. Just a tip for blending the fire stock footage and the burn marks and everything onto your actual original footage. Most cameras, especially sort of lower end cameras like uh, DSLRs and things, tend to shoot stuff quite soft. So it looks really nice on its own, but when you sort of look at it in detail, it's quite soft. So this is all quite soft, um, the house and everything. I think it's slightly out of focus, but that's not the end of the world. But the problem is that stock footage is, is perfect. Like when people make it and sell it, they make sure that it's as sharp as possible. And so if you look at these burn marks compared to the walls, these are a lot sharper in comparison. They look like they're in focus and the house is out of focus. To blend it a bit better, you probably want to add like a soften filter or something to these burn marks so that they match the house. Um, you can just add like a fast blur in After Effects and set it to about two and that probably sort that right out. The only other thing I probably would have added if it was me doing this is a little bit of a flicker on the house from the fire. So maybe like a glow around the windows and things where the flames are. And you can add an After Effects expression just to sort of make the exposure change from maybe one to 10 over the course of time and it will just flicker. So it'll make it look really, really realistic. But yeah, like I said, really good job with this shot. Very nicely done. So basically the house is on fire and then there's this explosion at the end and then it cuts to black and that's the end of the film. So yeah, I think that's pretty much everything I had in my notes. I have a couple of overall tips just to sort of help you in general and things that I thought could have been better throughout the entire film. The first one is lighting. So just make sure that all of your shots are really nicely exposed. If you haven't got lights, um, then make use of natural light and bounce lights. One of the things I suggested here is using a bed sheet to actually bounce and reflect light onto the characters so that it lights up the scene a bit better. This is a great alternative. If you haven't got any portable lights to move around in the scene to light up your subjects. But if you want to get some, there's some really cheap LED panels on Amazon and they make a massive difference in your films when you use them. And the second thing is just the pacing. So make sure you keep your shots a bit shorter. Some of the longer shots could have been cut down a lot and that probably would have reduced the runtime of the film by about a minute. And considering the film's only two and a half minutes, that's quite a big deduction in the runtime. I put here that it's better to leave the audience wanting more than to give them too much. And that's a rule that I tend to stick to in filmmaking. If you bear this in mind the next time you're doing an edit, it will probably improve the pacing of the film a lot. And when you manage to improve the pacing, it makes it a lot more likely that people are gonna watch the film all the way to the end, which is obviously what you want. Jake has been a long time subscriber of my channel and I've been following some of his work. And I think that this is a massive improvement from the stuff he's done before. So you should be really happy with yourself. That is pretty much everything I had to say. So thank you very much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you want to submit your film to this film feedback series, then leave it in the comments with a link to the film. I will add it to a list and I will check it out and hopefully make a video on it at some point. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, consider liking, subscribing, and I'll see you next time.